Hello, my name is Tyler Iorizzo, and today I will be presenting our work on the temperature-induced changes in the optical properties of skin in vivo. Therapeutic and surgical applications of light often cause an increase in temperature, which may alter the optical properties of target tissues. Quantifying the temperature-induced changes in optical properties of in vivo tissue would provide a better understanding of tissue response during phototherapy procedures. Thus, the goal of this study was to investigate the temperature dependence of the optical properties of skin in vivo and to monitor the heat-induced morphological changes to tissue structure using reflectance confocal microscopy. An in-house built single integrating sphere spectrophotometer was used to acquire the total transmittance, diffuse transmittance, and diffuse reflectance over the spectral range of 400 to 1650 nanometers. Spectroscopic measurements were performed at tissue temperatures of 25, 36, and 60 degrees Celsius. For total and diffuse transmittance measurements, shown in the top left and right configurations respectively, light emitted from a halogen lamp was focused onto mouse ears that were attached to the entrance port of the integrating sphere. Transmittance through air was used as reference. The exit port of the integrating sphere was closed during total transmittance measurements. For measuring diffuse transmittance, the exit port was opened to allow collimated light to escape. Collimated transmittance of the mouse ear was calculated by subtracting diffuse transmittance from the total transmittance signal for each wavelength of the spectral range investigated. For diffuse reflectance measurements, shown in the bottom configuration, Light was focused on the mouse ears attached to the exit port of the integrating sphere. A 99% spectralon diffuse reflectance standard was used as a reference. An inverse Monte Carlo algorithm was used to determine the optical properties from the measured quantities. The Monte Carlo technique took into account the exact geometrical and optical parameters of the experimental arrangement. The Monte Carlo technique was incorporated as a forward procedure into a quasi-Newton inverse algorithm. The inverse technique allowed determination of absorption coefficients, scattering coefficients, and anisotropy factors from the measurements of total transmittance, collimated transmittance, and diffuse reflectance under the assumption of the haney greenstein scattering phase function. The temperature control system is shown here with the schematic of the system shown in panel A and photographs of the system shown in panels B and C. Mouse ears were sandwiched between two sapphire windows and placed on top of an aluminum plate. The aluminum plate had a hole the size of the entrance and exit ports of the integrating sphere, which enabled light to pass through and enter the integrating sphere. A heater was attached to the aluminum plate and powered by an external power supply. The heater and power supply were connected to a temperature controlling unit and a temperature sensor was attached to the aluminum plate. In addition, the temperature was concurrently monitored using a thermal camera. Here are sample videos acquired using the thermal camera. The video on panel A shows the temperature distribution in the mouse ear during the heating process. The video on panel B shows the temperature distribution in the mouse ear while the desired temperature was maintained. Desired temperatures were achieved within 30 seconds of heating and were maintained within plus or minus 0.1 degrees Celsius. To reveal structural and functional changes in the mouse ear during heating, we monitored the heating process using a commercial confocal microscope. Illumination was provided by an 830 nanometer diode laser. Laser light was focused onto the sample by a 20x, 0.75 numerical aperture water immersion objective lens. The imager provided lateral and axial resolution of 1.5 micrometers and 5 micrometers respectively. The imaging depth was approximately 50 micrometers with a field of view of 800 by 600 micrometers squared. The mice were placed supine on the inverted sample stage as shown in panel B. Confocal images and videos were acquired as mouse ears were heated from 25 to 60 degrees Celsius using the temperature control system previously described. For validation purposes, temperature was concurrently monitored using a thermal camera 
previously described. The average absorption coefficients in the spectral range between 400 and 1650 nanometers are presented here. Wavelength dependence of the absorption coefficients at 25 and 36 degrees Celsius is similar both qualitatively and quantitatively. In contrast, absorption coefficients at 60 degrees Celsius are significantly higher than those at lower temperatures. Absorption in the spectral range from 400 to 930 nanometers is dominated by hemoglobin. It can be readily appreciated that Soray absorption band of hemoglobin exhibits a redshift from 417 nanometers at lower temperatures to 426 nanometers at 60 degrees Celsius. The double absorption peak of oxyhemoglobin between 545 and 575 nanometers is discernible at the lower temperatures, but is replaced by a single peak of deoxyhemoglobin at approximately 557 nanometers at 60 degrees Celsius. In addition, there appears a deoxyhemoglobin absorption band around 905 nanometers. Absorption in the spectral range from 1150 nanometers to 1600 nanometers is dominated by water. Two water absorption peaks are present in the proximity of 1200 nanometers and 1450 nanometers. Both peaks exhibit considerable blue shifts as tissue temperature increased to 60 degrees Celsius. Specifically, the water absorption peak shifts from 1192 nanometers at 25 degrees Celsius and 36 degrees Celsius to 1184 nanometers at 60 degrees Celsius, whereas the absorption peak located at 1454 nanometers at 25 degrees Celsius shifts to 1449 nanometers at 36 degrees Celsius and to 1441 nanometers at 60 degrees Celsius. Scattering coefficients, shown here, were found to decrease with increasing wavelength at each temperature, with stronger spectral dependence at 60 degrees Celsius as compared to 25 and 36 degrees Celsius. A much steeper slope of the scattering coefficients versus wavelength graph at 60 degrees Celsius may be explained by tissue coagulation that causes destruction of the larger scatterers, such as erythrocytes, as well as homogenization of the blood vessel walls and collagen bundles in the dermis. Anisotropy factors, shown here, were slightly lower at 60 degrees Celsius than at 25 and 36 degrees Celsius. This find is in accordance with the explanation for the changes in scattering coefficients, with tissue coagulation causing destruction of larger scatterers and homogenization of blood vessel walls and collagen bundles. This is a reflectance confocal video of in vivo mouse ear acquired from approximately 50 micrometers depth at the temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. It displays urethrocytes flowing within a blood vessel on the background of dermal collagen. Please also note two hair follicles in the upper right hand corner. This is a reflectance confocal video of in vivo mouse ear acquired from approximately 50 micrometers depth, being heated to 60 degrees Celsius. As tissue temperature rises, the reflectiveness of dermal collagen increases, blood flow ceases, and the vessel collapses. Temperature-induced swelling of coagulated collagen induces the shrinkage of hair follicles. In conclusion, we have investigated the temperature-induced changes of the mouse ear skin optical properties in vivo between 400 and 1650 nanometers in the temperature range between 25 and 60 degrees Celsius. Our results demonstrate that the major differences in absorption are caused by deoxygenation of blood and heating of water, while major differences in scattering are caused by blood and collagen coagulation. Reflectance confocal microscopy confirms these findings. Imaging reveals tissue shrinkage during its heating from 25 to 60 degrees Celsius, which leads to the increased concentration of chromophores and explains the significant rise of absorption coefficients at 60 degrees Celsius as compared to 25 and 36 degrees Celsius. 
The results of this study may provide a reliable foundation for dosimetry of therapeutic and diagnostic clinical procedures. We would like to thank Alana Musikansky for statistical analysis of the data, Elena Salamantina and Mauricio Cordero for technical support, Peter Germain for help with preparation of the manuscript, and Michael Hamlin's lab for help with animal handling. If you would like to learn more about this study, please see our manuscript recently published in Scientific Reports. Thank you.